You're watching KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to the Liberty Bowl. And back on the bowl edition of Countdown to Kickoff, joined now by WCBI Sports Director John Sokoloff for a closer look at Mississippi State. John, we know Mike Leach wants to win a game against his old team, but does that motivation necessarily translate over to his team? You see the big amount of improvements they've made this year compared to 2020. I think it's all relative and it gives them a bunch of momentum. 2020, they were not a good football team. So when you see that they went from that, a three win team that limped into a bowl game because of COVID, they had no business being in a bowl game. When you see them go from that to one year later, being a team that's seven and five, all those top 25 wins and really playing a bunch of different teams tough besides Alabama, I mean, that's a lot of momentum, and that shows Mike Leach. I think the best way for him to get these guys to have a lot of confidence is he can look them in the eye and say, look, guys, look how much better we are from year one to year two. Let's end this season on a real high note. A bunch of you guys are going to be back here next year. So if we finish strong, we can really continue that momentum into next season where most of you who were freshmen in this 2020 nightmare of a season will now be juniors coming off an eight-win impressive campaign and maybe – make some noise in the SEC and challenge those other teams and continue to challenge the Ole Misses, the A&Ms, Auburns, and those teams of the world. Now, Monday, Mike Leach compared his starting quarterback, Will Rogers, to Graham Harrell. What kind of QB is Texas Tech's defense going to be lining up against later tonight in the Liberty Bowl? Well, I uh, obviously not covering Texas Tech as much anymore, but I definitely kept tabs on them throughout the season. And, and having said that, I mean, you can make an argument that Will Rogers is one of the best quarterbacks that they're going to end up facing this year. And he had a monster stretch really at the end of uh, the regular season that was really good. I mean, this guy knows the offense now like the back of his hand. It's not like 2020 where he was playing with all 18 year olds. You know, now it's a year later and Mike Leach has given him the full keys to this offense. As Red Raider fans know, he lets kind of the QB have full reign and, and Will's taking advantage of that. And also on the receiving core, they got some really good young receivers or guys that they just brought in who have made instant impacts. Freshman Ra Ra Thomas has been sensational for them. They're gonna probably get him back for the Liberty Bowl if I had to guess. Jaden Wally, who has a little bit more of a down year, but he's another guy that can definitely make some noise. And Makai Polk, I believe, led the SEC in receptions this season. Another guy transfer they brought in there from Cal that's made an immediate impact. So it's not like it's one guy. Certainly not one guy on the defensive side of the ball for the Bulldogs, but Mississippi State will have one less DB that Tech quarterback Donovan Smith has to worry about later today, huh? Sure. Well, um, Martin Emerson, a quarterback for Mississippi State, is not going to be playing. He declared for the NFL draft. He's going to be preparing for that. We all know how Mike Leach feels about players uh, <laughs> opting out. And heading to the draft so that's that's something that'll you know that's going to help texas tech i mean other guys in that backfield though they are they're really tough guys emmanuel forbes another good man in the secondary there that can really uh cause some problems and zach arnett's defense has always been incredibly solid and last year it was sensational it's the reason they won a couple games and it's the reason that ed ogeron interviewed him for that lsu gig as well and they call them d line u i mean for a reason they can they can get after the quarterback. They can put some pressure on there. They got some linebackers that have stepped in and have really made some serious noise. Jet Johnson and, uh, you know, Nathan Pickering and Nathaniel Watson, all those guys have really made some noise for them. I mean, that's kind of like the heart of Mississippi State, really, even before Mike Leach got there. It was all the defensive players they bred for the NFL. I mean, it, it, it's their culture. And since you mentioned making noise, are the Cowbells really that bad <laughs> a lot of the times when i uh when i shoot the games i used to have to you know keep an eye out for tortillas coming down to hit me now uh, the, the cowbells are pretty bad they'll be bringing them into the liberty bowl they already had a game there this year but they didn't uh didn't bring them in that time but yeah they are they're loud but you you notice it between every play and and lane kiffin even during the egg bowl uh the first one of the first things he did was complain about how they don't really follow their rules of, uh, <laughs> of using the cowbell when they're supposed to when they're not supposed to so um, definitely should be a, a lot of fun and a lot of utilization of that uh, cowbell again John Sokoloff an old colleague who spent some time here on the South Plains and now the sports director at our sister station in Mississippi thanks again for your time John appreciate it Nant Leach's Bulldogs picked up a 35-31 win over Louisiana Tech in this year's season opener. He'll face off against the new La Tech head coach and Sonny Cumbie 
in just under an hour. Our Mason Ordisky rejoins us now with more on the man that brought the pump jack mentality to Texas Tech in his final ride with his alma mater. Well, David, you can't tell the story of Texas Tech football without the story of Sonny Cumbie, and it's a story of hard work and determination. Of course, he walked on as a quarterback from Snyder High School and ultimately earned the starting job under his head coach, Mike Leach. From there, he'd go on to coach in the Arena Football League and work his way back to Lubbock as a grad assistant. And just like he did for that starting quarterback position, he worked his way up the ladder to take position of offensive coordinator. But today will be his last game in the red and black before he departs parts for Louisiana Tech's head coaching job and ahead of this matchup Sonny wants to make sure that it's not all about himself but instead how hard his players will play for him. My boys are five and eight and so I get to watch them play flag football all the time and they just run around they tackle each other like crazy they throw the ball around with their friends coach Flani's kids they're a lot faster than my kids um, so I got to make sure that our guys are on defense and slow them down but what I tell our players is that's why you play the game. You started when you were five years old, you play it when you're eight years old, and you play it because it's a game, it's a lot of fun, and that's what I want our kids to do tomorrow night, is to play that game tomorrow night with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, and then all those things with a, a sense of focus and execution of what you're trying to do game plan wise. David, this might not just be the last game for Sonny Cumbie, but possibly for a lot of Texas Tech seniors. And I spoke to Adrian Fry earlier this week, and I asked him, does this feel like a senior game for Sonny Cumbie as well? And he said, absolutely. So you better believe that these guys are going to be playing with a chip on their shoulder for the man who's calling the shots. All right, we appreciate it, Mason. We bring in our senior writer from EverythingLoving.com, Phil Mayer, once again, to fill in the blank. Phil, opt-out's always a part of the modern day bowl games aside from cancellations for COVID. Uh, we <laughs> talked about it earlier with easy not playing, but you think blank is a bigger absence today. Mississippi State offensive tackle Charles Cross. The big uglies never get quite as much love as the skill guys, but this is one of the best players in the country and he won't be out there for the Bulldogs today. Cross is first team all SEC at left tackle and ESPN's Todd McShay currently has him going sixth overall in the upcoming NFL draft. With as much as this Mississippi State team passes the ball, it's absolutely crucial for them to have someone to protecting that blind side, and it will be someone stepping in and doing it today who is not Charles Cross. I think this could mark a really good opportunity for Tyree Wilson on Texas Tech. He's showed flashes as a pass rusher this year, but with a big day today, he could really build some momentum towards becoming a true force next year. As you guys mentioned earlier, Mississippi State also losing someone on the other side of the ball with defensive back Martin Emerson opting out there. Hopefully the Red Raiders can take advantage of those two as opposed to, you know, missing easy on that wide receiver core. Maybe some young guys will step up there and help out Donovan Smith. All right, Phil, we appreciate it. Stick around. You stick around as well. When we return, it's time to break down today's Liberty Bowl with another edition of Board Games. And later, we tell you what to watch for in tonight's first meeting between Texas Tech and Mississippi State in 50 years. You're watching a special bowl edition of Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Kickoff.